I would say this. I like conservatives. I like hanging out with conservatives. I like debating conservatives. I never find a rude conservative. It's almost impossible to find. I get nothing but love from conservatives. I spoke, you know this, I spoke at Liberty University, the largest evangelical uh, Christian, conservative Christian college in America. I spoke in front of 14,000 people. You've done the exact same gig. These people know my views. They know I'm married to a man. I got a standing ovation. They couldn't have been nicer. I wandered around campus for a couple hours. People coming up to me saying all sorts of nice things. By the way, some people did come up to me and say, you know, I'm praying for you. And I don't know if they meant that I'm praying for you, meaning I'm trying to pray the gay away or I'm just praying like your continued success or whatever. But it would almost be irrelevant to me. Even if someone- yeah, if someone, I'm praying the gay away. Well, that's not offensive. If they're not saying I'm going to, you know, come- me over the head. me over the head. Yeah. We're going to put you, put you somewhere you shouldn't be. I'm, yeah. pray, I, I'm praying for you. And, and by like, the way, okay, I can someone, deal with that. Someone that comes up to you with a smile on their face and says a bunch of nice things and then says, and I'm praying for you. Right. That's actually a lot it's nicer nice. than, than a progressive who will scream all day how much they love gay people and then will- unleash endless hate on me because I don't bow to them. So, you know, this is where this idea of tolerance and all of these things, I think, I think broadly speaking, conservatives have done a really nice job in the last couple of years of cleaning up whatever those bad parts are. The point is that um, conservatives still often, I think, should take the libertarian approach on it, be okay with a state by state situation, but there's still a, a certain layer of conservatives that take a sort of more moral position and on I, it you know what, and I, that it's going to infect society. Saying, And by the way, I'm not trying to change those people's opinions. That's the part that I really want to tell you. That, I'm not here to do change that. that. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I, had I just want to carve with, out um, room on the same side. As you can see, Dave Rubin is apparently still in denial about the GOP's homophobia. Now, if he were making this argument in, say, 2017, 2020, maybe even 2021, not necessarily, but maybe, then his argument would have a little bit more legs. But after the GOP collectively chose to make anti-LGBTQ plus hate their main focus in 2022, after he was dragged through the mud by his own fans after announcing that him and his husband were having two children, to make this argument, it just feels extra disgusting. And let's be really clear here. If he were simply downplaying the extent to which the modern Republican Party is homophobic, that would be gross. But he's just pretending as if it's not an issue. And why is he doing this? Because he's craven. He will do anything to advance his own career. And look, he doesn't have to do this, right? There are some conservatives who are in that movement, but yet they don't drink all of the Kool-Aid, right? They don't follow along with every single talking point. Adam Kokesh, for example, was a libertarian YouTuber, and he would confront individuals like Stephen Crowder about his refusal to support marijuana legalization. The question is, where's Adam Kokesh now? I mean, I think he's still around making YouTube videos, but you can't really advance on the right unless you go all in, right? It's like a funnel. You can kind of swirl around the top, but ultimately, if you want to make it, you're going to go to that same path. You're going to be all pro, you know, uh, evangelical. You're going to be gung-ho for taking away other people's rights. You just cross your fingers and hope that you're not next if you're Dave Rubin. But he's in denial, and he says here that, you know, he's never found a rude conservative. That's a really stupid argument to make because as a leftist, I've met other rude leftists. So why are you, like, going out of your way to portray conservatives as, like, these angels? Nobody believes that. Nobody believes that you've never met a rude conservative. All you have to do is read the comment section on your YouTube video when you announced that you and your husband were having children. But he says, uh, I've never met a rude, co never found a rude conservative. It's almost impossible to find. I get nothing but love from conservatives. Do you, Dave? Do you? We all know that you know that that's not true. As you were almost brought to tears when your own colleague, Glenn Beck, said, that your homosexuality was comparable to his alcoholism in his family. You've never never met a rude conservative, though. Now, his evidence for that is that he spoke to a crowd of 14,000 people at uh, Liberty University. whoop do you fucking do I mean, if your evidence uh, for tolerance is that, like, they didn't call you the F-slur, I mean, I feel like you, you need more, right? <laughs> you need more than that. And look, that's an anecdote. And what he doesn't understand is that the extent to which conservatives will tolerate homosexuality is indeed limited. They tolerate it insofar as he uses his identity 
to whitewash and legitimize homophobia. So if Dave Rubin can come out and say, you know, Ron DeSantis's Don't Say Gay bill isn't actually homophobic, I know I'm a homosexual, then they support that. But the second you start trying to humanize yourself, talking about your personal life and the fact that you and your husband want to have children, that's when their tolerance dries up. And he saw this firsthand, but he's still saying they're more tolerant than anyone else. You can never find a rude conservative. Just preposterous shit here. I mean, it's 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 embarrassing. It's comical. He also says, people did come up to me and say, I'm praying for you. Now, I don't know if they meant praying away the gay or praying for your continued success. Which one do you think it is, Dave? Which one? Now, look, to be fair, I was in the evangelical movement growing up. I was a kid. I had no choice. All right. Blame my parents, not me. But they've, you know, uh, my mom is out of that too. Um, but either way, like there were conservatives who would just pray for everyone, right? That's what they do. But is there a substantial, perhaps majority of them who claim that they're praying for him with the intent of praying away the gay? Obviously, obviously, they don't think that him being gay is acceptable. Again, they'll tolerate it to an extent, but they know that that is not the ideal. And as someone who says, you know, right-wing talking points, they would prefer that he were straight. Now, Candace Owens claims, well, even if they were saying that they're like, or even if they were praying away the gay specifically, uh, that's not offensive because they're not threatening to stone him. Is that the standard where it's only offensive if they call for your death? Actually, yes, Candace, it is offensive if they're praying away the gay for Dave Rubin. And Dave Rubin should have pushed back. He knows that that's offensive. Because what are you doing if you are praying away the gay? Even though praying is meaningless, it doesn't matter. You're talking to yourself. But I mean, the, the intent there is that they don't think that you are valid as you are. They don't accept you in your current state. They think that you're inherently defective. Therefore, for you to reach the ideal and beyond their status, you have to be straight. And Dave Rubin knows what that means. That means that in order for him to be ideal in their eyes, he'd have to leave his husband. He'd have to give his children away to a nice, loving, straight Christian couple. To say, I'm praying for you to not be gay is inherently hateful because you're saying, I don't support you. It's like one step worse than those people who are like, look, I, I love gay people, okay? I don't hate the sinner, I hate the sin. So it's like, oh, okay, so being gay is a sin, that's, that's pretty fucked up. Loving somebody of the same gender is sinful. To love is sinful. Does that not seem like a contradiction? But again, like don't try to quiz conservatives or Christians about the Bible or try to, you know, uh, pretend as if they're consistent because we all know that that's not the case. Uh, moving on. So Dave Rubin actually claims it's not the right, but the liberals, they're the ones who unleashed hate on him because he doesn't bow to them. Okay, first of all, we unleash hate on you and not necessarily hate, but we make fun of you to be specific and more charitable to us because you use your gay identity to further legitimize the subjugation of your own commu uh, community to second-class citizenship status. You use your status as a member of the LGBTQ community as confirmation that everything that they're doing is, is acceptable, right? So if the GOP passes laws that are homophobic, you can come out there and say it's not homophobic, and then everyone on the right can point to you as evidence that the GOP is not homophobic. Do you understand why that's a problem? You're weaponizing your own identity against your own community. That's why we don't like you. It's not because you don't bow to us. You can disagree with us on economics or healthcare, and we'd push back against that. We think that your arguments are silly because Dave Rubin isn't necessarily bright. But the reason why you're a target of the left is because it's so insidious what you're doing. You're throwing your own community under a bus for personal advancement, and I don't know how you sleep with yourself at night. Now, he had the audacity to claim here that when it comes to tolerance, conservatives uh, have done a really nice job over the years of cleaning up whatever the bad parts are. He's saying this in the year 2022, in the year of our Lord and Savior, 
2022 has been a record-breaking year for anti-LGBTQ plus legislation. This is data from the ACLU as of July 1st, and as you can see, they've placed restrictions on trans athletes, school curriculums, gender-affirming health care for trans youth, religious or First Amendment exemptions that allow for discrimination against queer people, and more. Now, in July, 10 anti-gay laws targeting schools went into effect. 10. That's double digits. Now, overall, the GOP censorship crusade, specifically against schools, led to a 250% spike in school gag order proposals with bills more punitive than those introduced in 2021. But he says, nope, they've done a really good job at, like, making it seem as if they're really more accepting of queer people. Really? I mean, if you want to try to do apologia for the GOP and make it seem as if they're accepting of gay people you can't be that hyperbolic like that's bad propaganda like tucker carlson i hate him but he does good propaganda right he allows for some plausible deniability concedes some arguments to the left but dave rubin is a bad propagandist right what he does is he'll make claims that are so hyperbolic that makes it just seem laughable where nobody can take him seriously who's serious anyways now you know the right will fall for what he says because he's saying what they want him to say, like a good little stooge, like a good little parrot. But overall, for you to claim, oh, like they, lately they've done so great at not being homophobic, when they've introduced literally hundreds of anti-LGBTQ plus bills, this is why the left makes fun of you, because you're such a craven opportunist that you make yourself look like a fucking idiot. Now, he says he thinks conservatives should take a more libertarian approach on gay issues, but for those who don't, he's not trying to change those people's positions. Now, why would he say this? Well, of course, it's for self-interest. He knows that he'd be fucked if, you know, the Supreme Court were to overturn marriage equality. He'd be fucked if the GOP continued down this trajectory with borderline genocidal rhetoric against queer people. He would be fucked even more if this groomer talk continued now that he's going to be a parent. So he has that level of self-interest, right? He's gay and he doesn't want to leave that gay lifestyle, but he knows that, you know, one day it may come to that where he may not be accepted by this movement. So he's, you know, he's being honest there a little bit saying, I, I hope that they take a libertarian approach. But of course, I wouldn't try to change those people's opinions. Why? Is that not permissible in conservative circles? I mean, is debate and dialogue, the free exchange of ideas, which you love apparently, is that not permitted in those circles? They can disagree with you, sure, but why wouldn't you even try to change those opinions? Not only is that cuck shit, but it's pathetic. If you actually think that being conservative entails supporting queer people and being pro-freedom for queer people, then why wouldn't you change their minds? Why wouldn't you try to push them in the correct position or direction rather it's because dave rubin he doesn't want to upset the apple cart too much he knows that he's on thin ice with conservatives just by being gay and in a gay marriage but for him to have children that was the straw that broke the camel's back for a lot of conservatives especially given the rhetoric that they've been using lately pretending as if every single gay person is a danger to children and they shouldn't be around queer people. So now he has to make it seem as if, oh my God, please accept me. I promise you I'm not trying to change your opinion. I promise you I will bow to you at every step of the way. I'll kiss your feet if you want to. Just please let me exist in this space and continue to at least be myself at home. But, you know, that, that can only be the norm for him for so long, considering where they're going. I mean, again, it's getting scary, the rhetoric that the right is using, but yet he's still in this day and age at this time in 2022 denying that there's any issue there. It's truly just, it's embarrassing, it's sick, it's craven, but it's very on brand for a grifter like Dave Rubin. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. Recovery mode, my brain ideas. 